Bonjour, it's Tom Padula from Tom Padula TV on YouTube and Insegna Booksellers. And uh, this morning I am five minutes late. I apologize. Uh, I don't know, time you know, flies away sometimes. And uh, that's the reason really why I've been thinking of um, uh, just doing the podcast or the presentations or the lessons uh, whenever I can. That way I have more flexibility. So. Uh, I encourage people from now on to actually look uh, for my page, Tom Padula, uh, Tom Padula on Facebook and uh, go to it each day or every second day and have a look at what I put up uh, because uh, I have made it uh, my mission to, to actually do something different uh, uh, every time I come on a, on a live show. So the, 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 the idea really is to keep going in various series uh, of uh, what uh, I have contact with uh, every day here at Insegna uh, with all my books and uh, I've organized them all at, you know with, to to actually uh, to actually cover certain themes so as we move along I want to uh, I actually want to uh, present the various themes and topics. Now, one of them uh, was food, uh, cucina, cooking, and salute. And I thought the two themes went well together because without good food, we can't uh, really have a good life. You need, you need sustenance every day. And our ability to select what we need is important because each one of us have certain preferences and, um, you know, that's it. So today, I got a, <clears throat> a bit of a sniffle. <laughs> well, the thing is, the thing is sometimes uh, with the hot weather, cold weather, you know, depending on how much you do, you, you do get um, uh, sort of, you know, it gets to you. And the, my way of handling it is very simple. It's uh, Take it easy, go easy, slow, and uh, you know, look after yourself uh, every day. Uh, again, with good food, uh, some exercise, and you know, keeping the spirit alive as well, as well as the emotional one. So uh, that's where I am. And this morning, five minutes. I thought I got up fairly early. Really, I shouldn't should have been here on time. But that's what happens. Uh, before you know it. Uh, uh, time runs away because before I come to Insegna, I always make sure that, uh, you know, I've done what I had to do at home. Don't you do the same? Cheers. How are we going to start today? Well, I've got a couple more minutes to discuss it. <clears throat> We're going to start with the words first, you know, repeating the words. Because really, when you're learning a language, what you do need to, to have are the words, the nouns, the parole, you know, the, uh, the, these are the elements, uh, les mots, uh, these are the elements of a language that we need. <clears throat> also, the adjective, because, you know, you want to say uh, a small door, a large door, uh, an intelligent dog, uh, a very smart, a smart person, or whatever, uh, long trousers. You know. So, in other words, the adjectives add to the quality of the word that we want to uh, that, that we want to use. And the other one is, of course, the verb. The verb seems to be the engine room of a language because without it, you really can't go anywhere. You need the, the verb in order to put things into place and in order to express a particular action or feeling or whatever. Just words not enough, even with the adjective. So you need the verb. Now, most verbs start with the verb with être et avoir in French, uh, to be and to have in English. So I have a bottle. I have a telephone. I have a book. You have a book. 
je tu as, il a, nous avons, vous savez, ils ont. Je suis, tu es, il est, nous sommes, vous êtes, ils sont. So with these two verbs, you can make hundreds and hundreds of, uh, of sentences. And, you know, initially they can be short, but then with the other help of the rest of the, uh, with the rest of the, uh, of the mechanic uh, room, warehouse uh, of language, that is the nine parts of speech, then you can do the rest. Okay, now I've talked about these things uh, before, but that's part of the lesson. You know, it's a continuum, and the lessons themselves uh, need to be, uh, you know, repeated often. All right, so let's start. It's eleven thirty-six. <clears throat> I was five minutes late, so I'll start. I'll finish at uh, twelve thirty today. And welcome to Isabel Tarquinio. Oh. New name, very nice. Welcome. Okay. Le jardin public. Le ballon. La ficelle. Le sable. Now, when I say these words, because we said listen, read, write, and then finally speak. So, for the moment, we're listening, okay? If you know any of these words, good. All right? I'll start again. Le ballon. La ficelle. Le sable, le pique-nique, le cerf volant, la glace, le chien, les balançoires, la barrière, le chemin, les tétardes, le toboggan, la grenouille, le buisson, les patins à roulettes, les enfants. La trottinette, la platebande, le banc, le lac, la laisse, les canards, les arbres, le bateau, la corde à sauter, les canetons, la flaque, les fleurs, la balançoire, les pigeons, la poussette, la clôture, la terre, le bébé, les signes. Now, of course, you know, we only know some of the words. We don't know all of them. So I'm going to show you the pictures and then you can work it out. Uh, you can write them out and, uh, you know, try to find out what the ones that you don't know mean. Here we go. Le ballon. La ficelle. Le sable, le pique-nique, le cerf volant, la glace, le chien, les balançoires, la barrière, le chemin, les tétards. Le ta toboggan, la grenouille, welcome to Abid Ali Afnan, le buisson, les patins à roulettes, les enfants, la trottinette, la plate-bande, le banc, le lac, there it is, la laisse, les canards, les arbres, le bateau, la corde à sauter, les canetons, la flaque, les fleurs, la balançoire, les pigeons, la poussette, la clôture, la terre, le bébé, les signes. Of course, this is just... This is just a selection of words, of course, about the, the jardin public. You can add your own, uh, your own other words, uh, because here it's beautiful. Here they show it all. Here they show the, see that, and then you have to put them in the right place. Uh, 
So this is a children's book, of course, but it can be, it can be used by adults because word banks are necessary for everyone. Okay, so here we go. Now, the other thing about what I'm doing now is that these words here can also be transferred to other languages, to all the languages of the world. Because, you know, in a, a public garden, you've got lots of different things. And in different places, there will be uh, different types of, uh, of gardens, so different words. So here we go. You know, that's what you can do with words. And also you can write, um, you know, le ballon, <coughs> the ball, la ficelle, I don't know, le sable, um, looks like sand, the picnic, yes, le cephalon, uh, arcobaleno in Italian, uh, whatever, la glace, etc., etc. I don't want to go through them now because, we, you know, I have to move on uh, with the program. And now we're going to do the... the what I said, some of the grammar, okay? So here we go. Stay on. Oh, Carmelina Palazzolo, welcome. Okay, so we've done the words in French for public gardens. Now we're going to go to uh, the fr French grammar, the grammar. And last week, we, what did we do last week? Let's have a look. We, we had um, the irregular comparatives and superlatives. And this week will be, uh, will be uh, up to use uh, of the definite article. So let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Here we go. Yes. Forms. Okay. So this one here, and this one here is adjectives without, without comparative and superlative forms. Without. Some adjectives introduced in the complement by the preposition a, to or at in English, have no comparative or superlative forms. They don't. Inferieur. Superieur. So inferieur a. Superieur a. Anterieur a. Posterieur a. Interior a, exterior a, which in English is inferior to, superior to, uh, anterior to, posterior to, interior to, exterior to. Les œufs bruns, brun, les œufs bruns, sont-ils supérieurs aux œufs blancs? So, are brown eggs superior to white eggs? I'm not sure, you have to ask the chicken. Some adjectives that already express comparisons of inferiority or superiority do not have special comparative forms. So some adjectives that already express comparisons of inferiority or superiority do not have special comparative forms. They're already there. Ene, that is older, oldest. Cadet or cadet, younger, youngest. Le garçon cadet in dans la famille de pas you know, the Padula, uh, of my surname. Premier, premier, first. Dernier, dernier, last. Le dernier waltz avec toi. The last waltz with you. Principal, principal. Okay, so these are all adjectives without comparative and superlative forms. And this one, the last one is, c'est mon frère cadet. It's my younger brother. C'est mon frère cadet. Useful phrases with comparative and superlative. Useful phrases now. Plus, plus, moins, moins, plus, moins. Plus je lis ce livre, plus je l'aime. The more I read this book, the more I like it. Moins je lis, moins j'apprends. The less I read, the less I learn. Plus je fais le ménage, moins j'en ai envie. De plus en plus, more and more, de moins en moins, less and less, de mieux en mieux, better and better. Ce travail devient de plus en plus difficile. This work is becoming more and more difficult. Le climat est de moins en moins agréable. The climate, the climate is less and less agreeable. Elles sont de mieux en mieux, 
she sings better and better. D'autant plus que, all the more, as because. Il est d'autant plus heureux ici qu'il a un jardin. He is all the more happy here because he has a garden. And I agree with that one. Tant mieux, so much the better. Tant pis, so much the worse. De mal en pis, from bad to worse. Les choses vont de mal en pis. Things go from bad to worse. Write the following sentences in French, then they say in the book. <clears throat> and talking about the book, I can't always show you. You know, it's, it's just too much to repeat the things. If you really want to learn French, what you need is, one, the willingness to do so. You've got to spend, invest some of your time in it and invest some of your money by buying books from me, preferably. But you don't have to buy anything from me. You can buy it from other people. What it is with the books in general today is that uh, there is a, it's, that it's like, um, you know, we had the streets in the street and now we have the superhighway. So the superhighway is our technology. But if you ever have driven on a superhighway, you can't stop. They don't let you, except occasionally. And then you've got to go at a particular speed. Otherwise, the other, either too fast or too slow, it's no good for them. They want you to do exactly what they say. Now, some of the courses, the language courses, and some of the teachers behave in that way. They want you to do exactly what they say in order for you to achieve a particular goal. But Tom Padula's goal for you is that you are an independent learner. You are responsible for your own learning. I am here only as a guide. Therefore, everything goes. Whatever pleases you, whatever is in your heart, whatever time you can give, it's okay. You'll get, in the end, what you have done. Otherwise, you can't. I keep going, even though, you know, I shouldn't sometimes, like today, but... I want to do, I haven't mentioned that today is the 10th of February, 2023, and it's also lesson 46, number 46, lesson 46. So we'll be going up to the end of this particular chapter, then I'm going to take a break, and what I'm going to do after that will be a series number two, which will not have a specific a specific time, that, but it will be on Tom Padula on Facebook, the one with the round ball around it. Okay? Good. Uh, Carmelina, I don't answer, you know, I appreciate your, main, your, your, your comment, but I can't stop. All right? So please do enter whatever, uh, and that will stay there uh, for others to see. Okay, so write the following sentences in French. The child talks more and more each day, and I've given them to you before. Don't forget, the grammar is not the language. The grammar is about the language. But the examples is part of the language, and they are the, the written form of the language. Now, possessive adjectives. Will I do that? Possessively. Oh, yes, I'll do that. Well, although we've done quite a bit already. But I'll do this one too. Because I want to finish the grammar part in this particular chapter. And um, put it behind us. Possessive. In French, de and the name of the person shot possession. Le livre de Paul. La mère de Marie et de Georges. Mary St. George's mother. Paul's book that was before. Les livres des garçons, the boys' works, the boys' books. Following are the forms of the possessive adjectives. My, ton, and I'll show you these ones because these are important. Here we are. These are the forms of the possessive adjectives. My, your, his, her, its, her, your, and their. In French, masculine. Mon, ton, son, notre, votre, leur. In uh, uh, masculine or fem feminine singular, before a vowel. Mon, ton, son, notre, votre, leur. Mon ami. Even though the ami is masculine. 
So it can be masculine or feminine. That's a, a difficult. You know, you have to remember that. Feminine singular, ma ta sa, ma soeur, ma, mon frère, etc. Ma soeur, ma mère, you know, the feminine ones. Ma ta sa, notre, votre, leur. Mes tes soeurs, no, no, vos, leur. And that's in the plural. Now, so you can see with the adjectives too, there are more forms and, and adverbs. They say an adverb, but in this case, it's a possessive adjectives. The possessive adjectives agree in number and gender with the noun modified. I would say qualified. It doesn't change. It doesn't modify the word, but it qualifies it. So this one here, it's a question of semantics again. Some people express themselves in particular ways, some other people in other ways. With the object possessed, not with the possessor. Mon frère. Ma soeur, ma mère, elle a son livre, il a son livre, etc. Note that mon, ton, and son are used for before feminine nouns or adjectives beginning with a, a vowel or silent H. Mon ami, Hélène, mon histoire préférée. The possessive adjectives must be repeated before each noun. Je dois écrire à ma soeur, à mes parents et à mon oncle. Note that French uses the singular possessive adjective when only one object is possessed by each person. Il attache, attache leur ceinture de sécurité. Each person has only one seat belt. They fasten their seat belts. Now, no, I should have stopped there. I'm going to stop there and maybe next week uh, we'll continue. Okay, with the use of the definite article as a possessive. Okay, that's good. That's very good. All right, well, that's French grammar. So we've done the words. We've done the grammar. Now, what do you think we should do now? Huh? <laughs> what do you think we should do now? We have to sing. Well on. I'll just do this one here. This is Milord, uh, a fam famous song, uh, sung in Italian as well and in other languages. Allez, venez, Milord, vous asseoir à ma table. Il fait si froid dehors, ici c'est confortable. Laissez-vous faire, Milord, et prenez bien vos aises, vos pains sur mon cœur. Et vos pieds sur une chaise, je vous connais, milord, vous ne m'avez jamais vu. Je ne suis qu'une fille du porte, qu'une ombre de la rue. Pourtant, j'y vous, effrôlé, comme vous passiez hier, vous n'étiez pas peu fier. Dame, le ciel vous comblait, votre foulard de soie. Flottant sur vos épaules, vous aviez le beau rôle, on aurait dit le roi. Vous marchez en vainqueur, au bras d'une demoiselle, mon Dieu, qu'elle était belle. J'en ai froid dans le cœur. Allez, venez, milord, vous s'asseoir à ma table. Il fait si froid dehors, ici c'est confortable. Laissez-vous faire, milord, et prenez bien vos aises, vos peines sur mon cœur et vos pierres sur une chaise. Je vous connais, milord, vous ne m'avez jamais vu. Je suis qu'une fille du porte qu'une ombre de la rue. Dire qu'il suffit parfois qu'il y ait un navire pour que tout se déchire quand le navire s'en va. Il emmenait avec lui la douce aux yeux si tendres qui n'a pas su comprendre, qui n'a pas pu, qui n'a pas su comprendre. Qu'elle brissait votre vie. L'amour, ça fait pleureur. Comme quoi l'existence, ça vous donne toutes les chances pour les reprendre après. 
Allez, venez, Milord, vous avez l'air du monde. Laissez-vous faire, Milord, venez dans mon royaume. Je soigne l'air mort, je chante la romance, je chante les Milord qui n'ont pas eu de chance. Regardez-moi, Milord, vous ne m'avez jamais vu, mais vous pleurez, Milord. Ça, j'aurais jamais cru. Eh bien, voyons, Milord. Souriez-moi, Milord. Mieux que ça, un petit effort, voilà, c'est ça. <rire> Allez, riez, Milord. Allez, chantez, Milord. La, 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 la,
and creates a dreamlike fantasy. The woman by his side, Votram, evokes for him an atmosphere of elegance, masquerade, moonlight. It's kind of a carnival time there, really appropriate. And a soir de glissant of images. Unite sadness and joy, beauty and regret. Welcome to Assunta Lombardi. So, Claire de Lume, votre âme, est un paysage choisi. Que vont charmant masque et bergamasque. Jouant du luth et dansant et quasi triste sous leur déguisement fantasque. Beautiful, beautiful. I, he's, a, he's a favorite of mine as well, this guy, Paul Verlaine. I've heard of him all my life, where, you know, in my studies of French. Very good. Now, well, 12.01, we've already done half an hour, which is good. I'm going to sing you another song. Salvatore Adam, okay? You've got to look him up. He also sings in Italian. He was um, born in Puglia, in Italy, and he migrated with his parents as a young boy to Belgium. And there he, he went to school and, of course, became a Belgian citizen, speaking French, etc., etc. Look him up. Tombe la neige, tu ne viendras pas ce soir. Tombe la neige, et mon cœur s'habille de noir. Ce soyez cortège, tout en larmes blanches, l'oiseau sur la branche, pleure le sortilège. Tu ne viendras pas ce soir, mais qui mon désespoir, mais tombe la neige. Impassible manège. Only half today, only half. Because we have to do Conte Sympathique, and this time, let's see what, what's in store for us. Conte Sympathique, of course, I use for... Conte Sympathique, Conte Sympathique. Mon oncle Ferré, Fainé. Mon oncle Fainé. Okay, that's uh, just to let you know. This is this is it here. Mon oncle Fainé. We're going to read that, and then the idea of this is that we uh, we pick up all the words in this particular uh, uh, in this particular story, and uh, uh, and you read it over and over again. But the ultimate is to be able to summarize the story in French. In speaking French. Not bad. So I'm just going to read it here. I'll, I'll, I'll have to let you into the... Even if you don't pick up all of it, it doesn't matter. Okay. Mon oncle Fainé. Dans chaque famille, il y a quelqu'un qui est légendaire. Dans ma famille, il s'appelait l'oncle Fainé. Fainé. I, I say, Fainé. C'était le frère unique de ma mère. Elle l'adorait. Moi, je ne l'avais jamais vu. Mon père m'a raconté la conduite bizarre de cet oncle. Mon oncle Fainé ne travaillait pas, mais il se mettait vraiment en colère lorsqu'on prononçait le mot Fainéant. <rire> Fainéant uh, means doing nothing, you know what I mean? Selon mon père, cet oncle fameux disait, à mon avis, il faut s'amuser, il faut jouer de la vie quand on est jeune. J'aurai assez de temps pour travailler quand je serai vieux. <laughs> when you're young, you should be enjoying yourself. You only work when you're old. <laughs> Not bad. La dernière fois qu'il a exprimé cette philosophie, c'était le jour de son anniversaire. Il avait 50 ans et il s'est vanté d'en avoir jamais travaillé. Une seule fois, il avait pensé à accepter une offre d'emploi. Il a pu se sauver grâce à la force de son caractère. Un de ses amis avait un magasin de confession et il avait besoin de quelqu'un pour l'aider le samedi 
seulement le samedi, une fois par semaine. La réaction de mon oncle Fenet était la question. « Voyons, vous voulez que je travaille tous les samedis ?» Il s'est marié à l'âge de 20 ans et un an. Au début, sa femme lui a demandé pourquoi il ne cherchait pas de travail. « Ma chérie, » a-t-il répondu, « le mariage et l'emploi ne vont pas ensemble. Par conséquent, je ne travaille pas. Pour moi, oncle Féné était le synonyme de fainéant. <rire> »« Do nothing. » Un jour, ma mère a reçu un, tel un télégramme. « Mon oncle Féné allait nous rendre visite après une absence de dix ans. » Comme je n'avais que neuf ans, j'allais le voir pour la première fois. La semaine avant sa visite, ma mère m'a répété chaque jour, « Sois sage quand ton oncle arrivera. Surtout ne prononce pas le mot « fainéant ». Elle continuait à me répéter, « Ne dis pas fainéant, ne dis jamais fainéant ». Enfin, le jour est arrivé, toute la famille a Attendez l'arrivée de cet oncle. Quelqu'un a frappé à la porte. Avait, avant de l'ouvrir, ma mère a répété deux fois de plus. Ne dis pas fainéant, ne dis pas fainéant. Nous étions bien nerveux quand la porte s'est ouverte et notre oncle fainé a apparu. Je l'ai regardé sans bouger. Ma mère a embrassé son frère et lui donnant un baiser chaque, sur chaque joue. Puis, en se tournant vers moi, elle a dit « Embrasse ton oncle <rire> Embrasse ton oncle Fénéon, je veux dire <rire> Embrasse ton oncle Fénéon, je veux dire Embrasse <rire> !» En attendant ce mot interdit, mon oncle s'est mis en colère. Il s'est retourné et il est sorti de la maison sans, sans même dire adieu. C'était la première et la dernière fois que j'ai vu mon oncle Féné. <laughs> oh, what a beautiful story. The uncle didn't want to be called Féné. Huh? I, do, I do nothing. Welcome to Tony Angelino. And this was uh, mon oncle Féné. Féné, mon oncle Féné. So the mother was, uh, you know, reminding his son, her son, don't say Fénéon, don't say Fénéon. She, she had said it so many times that when the uncle arrived, that's exactly what she said, and she couldn't repeat. Remember, this name was Féné. Well, as I said, Conte Sympathique, I've got plenty of copies here. If anyone wants them, if you come and see me and you want to, uh, want to learn French and you want to have some... Uh, you know, all, all the tools that you need. As I said, the most important tool is you've got to want to do it. Number two, you have to commit uh, your time to it and also some resources. And you then have to stay the course. And finally, don't expect you speak in French as if you were going to McDonald's. You know, you get your hamburger straight away. It's going to take time and it's going to take some effort. But if you enjoy it along the way, c'est tout. That's all. It's the journey. You know, it's more important than, you know, when you get there. When you get there, you got there. But how you get there is important. Okay. So that's that. Uh, I think I'm done with French today. We've done, we've done uh, the, the words. We've done the grammar. Uh, we built up the, the, you know. Oh. Ooh, I missed, I missed one. I missed one. I should have done it, but I didn't do it. Then the place, oh, I remember now. I remember now. The place are important because you can use those amongst yourselves. So it's important that you do les femmes parlent trop. Okay, again, if you come to me, we can work it out. There are key uh, resources that you need and then anything else that you want. Good one. Spanish. How are we going to start Spanish? Our usual way, no? Because the sun is up there. Now, it's right in the middle of the day here in Melbourne. But, cuando caliente el sol, when the sun comes down, no? Huh? And don't worry about the repetition each week of these songs because... Um, I'm tr actually trying to learn the words, but I'm finding it. I haven't made a real effort to learn the song as a whole. 
Cuando caliente el sol aquí en la playa, siento tu cuerpo vibrar cerca de mí. Es tu palpitar, es tu cara, es tu pelo, son tus besos, me estremezco. Cuando calienta el sol, cuando calienta el sol aquí en la playa, Siendo tu cuerpo vibrar cerca de mí, es tu palpitar, tu recuerdo, mi locura, mi delirio, mi estremezco, cuando calienta el sol, cuando calienta el sol. At this time we're not going to do the English part, but it finishes off cuando calienta el sol, when the sun comes there, when it's sunset. El sol aquí en la playa, here on the, on the, on the, not on the sand, on the beach, whatever, close to the beach, <laughs> on the sand, siento, I feel, tu cuerpo vibrar, your body vibrating, close to me, es tu palpitar, es tu cara, es tu, so, etc. Again, you know, these songs uh, are real treasures because they give us lots of, lots and lots of words, important. Now, this time here, and this time here, I'm going to do some phrases again. Okay? So let's see what phrases we're going to learn today. Which phrases are we going to learn today, Tom? Which ones? Let's have a look. Huh? Okay. Okay, now this one here. Now, polite phrases. Yes. Pardon. Sorry, excuse me. Está bien. That's all right. De nada. Huh? Not at all. Don't mention it. No se preocupe. Uh, don't worry. No importa. It doesn't matter. Que, uh, que dice? Que dice? Como dice? I beg your pardon. Como dice? Am I disturbing you? Le molesto? 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 Am I dis molesto? Am I disturbing you? To molest. In English, but it's got a different meaning. Here, it's, uh, you know, it might bothering you. It's much softer in Spanish. I'm sorry to have troubled you. Siento haberle molestado. I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't have done that. Siento haberle molestado. Good, that's fine. Bien, está muy bien. Bien, muy bien. Está muy bien. Eh? Good, that's now. Good morning. Buenos dias. Good afternoon, buenas tardes, um, good evening or good night, buenas noches, even just remembering that, buenos dias, buenas tardes, buenas noches, good. Hello, hola, que hay, hola, hola, que hay, what, adios, hello, they can even say adios, I don't know whether you can do that, but that's what this book says, how are you, como esta usted, como esta usted, muy bien. Gracias. Goodbye. Adios. That's better. See you soon. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. May I introduce you to my wife. Voy a presentarle a mi mujer. Voy a presentarle a mi mujer. A mi marido. A mi marido. Glad to know you. Encantado. Encantado. Como so el lama? What's your name? Como so el lama, Tony Angelino? Welcome. What's your address? Qual es su dirección? I think we've done this one before, but it doesn't matter. The repetition is important. Uh, Qual es su número de teléfono? Sorry, I need to drink. I can't go on without it. Quiere be beber algo? Would you like a drink? Quiere beber? Algo. Quiere fumar? Oh, no, I don't want to fumar. 
Can I offer you anything? Puedo ofrecerle algo. Puedo ofrecerle algo. Thanks for, for having me. Muchas gracias por su hospitalidad. Much thanks for your hospitality, I would have said. Muchas gracias por su invitación. Muchos recuerdos, ah. Mucho, you know, give my, my uh, best, too. Bon voyage. Buen viaje. Buen viaje. Good luck, all the best. Buena, buena suerte. Buena suerte. Good. What about sign and public notices? We're going to do some of those. Abierto. It's open. Abierto. It's open. Agua potable. Drinking water. Ascensor. Lift or elevator. Banco. It's a bank, not a desk. Bank. Caballeros. Gentlemen. Caja. Cash desk. Co cerrado. Closed. Cerrado. Closed. Circulen por la derecha. Keep right. Circulen. Circulen por la derecha. Comisaria. Police. Correos. Post office. Entrada. Entrance. Entrada gratuita. Admission free. Guia. Guide. Hay habitaciones. Vacancies. Room to let. Hotel completo, no vacancies. Information, information, interpret, interpreter, interpreter. Lavabos, lavatory, libre, vacant, free, unoccupied. That's when you go to the toilet. Okay, well, that's, that's that for Spanish for the words and the phrases. What about the words? We want to do some words? We did the, the A last time, didn't we? We did I, we said I, now we want to do B, I'm going to do B, um, B, okay. Baby, El Nino, Bachelor, El Soltero. Back or return, de vuelta. Back, la espalda. Back, la espalda. Bad, malo. Bag, la bolsa. Bikes, la panaderia. La panaderia. Balcony, el balcón. Ball, el baile. El baile. That's the ball. Dance. Dance. Ball. Oh, dance, ball dance. El ba ballroom dance, that's what they mean. Ball, a sport, the sport, the ball for the sport is la pelota. Ballpoint pen, el boligrafo. Banana, el platano. Well, it's different from English. Banana becomes el platano. Band music, la orquestra, la orquesta. Bandage, la venda. Bank, el banco. Bar, el bar. Barbers, la peluqueria. Basket, la cesta. Bath, el baño. Bath, bañar. Diving cap, el gorro de baño. Diving costume, el traje de baño. Diving trunks, el banador. El bañador, el bañador. Bathroom, el cuarto de baño. Battery, la, ba la batería. Bay, la baja, la baya. La bahia. Be, ser, estar. Two ways. Yo esto, tu está, está, no estamos, voy, vos, nosotros estamos, vosotros estáis, uh, etc. <laughs> you got to remember the word, you know, the memory is important. Beach, la playa. Beach, that's the word, the word that I couldn't get before. Aquí a la playa, uh, on the beach. There you are. Bid la barba, beautiful, hermoso, hermoso, because, porque, bed, la cama, bedroom, el dormitorio, beef, la baja, la vaca, Bia la cerveza, la cerveza más, oh, the best beer. Before, 
Hey, la cerveza, you know, when I get one of the Spanish uh, beers, la cerveza. Good way, good way to describe beer. Antes, before, empezar, begin, to begin. Oh, empezar, be, to begin. So I've got some books which says empezar, so from the beginning. Good. Beginning, el principio. Behind, atrás. Believe, creer. Bel, la campana. Belong to, pertenecer. Below, abajo. Belt, el cinturón. Birth, la, la litera. Best, el mejor. Better, mejor. Between, entre. Bicycle, la bicicleta. La bicicleta. Big, grande. Bill, la cuenta. Bird, el pájaro. Birthday, el comple cumpleaños. Bite, murder. Uh, this goes on and on and on. Whoa, too much. Too much. We're going to stop there. Now, what's the time? 12.21. I want to do... Um, I'm going to stop there. So we stop that. 1.31. Okay. Uh, where's El Cid? I want to do El Cid. Where are you, El Cid? Where are you? Uh, oh, here you are. El Cid. So, last time we did... El Cid. Didn't, when was the last time we did El Cid? Huh? I haven't done El Cid for El Cid. Okay, here we are. 13, 14. All right. Here we go. We're going to do capítulo uh, ocho. Se junta la familia del Cid. Se junta la familia del Cid. Uh, we'll just do this one here. There's a note here that says, Aben Galbon represents the friend in peace of El Cid. There's very little known about this curious character. Okay. I'm going to show you the words, and if you can read it. Again, nothing like having the book in front of you. Here we are. Se junta la familia, familia, familia del Cid. So the most important thing about this is that I try to read. Now, if I make mistakes, that's good because then somebody can say to me, Tom, you made a mistake there. So if you're getting it 80% right, 60% right, you need to correct the mistakes and then you move towards perfection. And when you achieve it, the good Lord knows. Una vez cumplida la misión, al ver la familia del Cid y su seguito salieron de San Pedro de Cardeña para Valencia. Raquel y Vidas entonces dijeron a Alvar que el Cid les había empobrecido y pidieron su dinero, aunque fuera sin intereses. Amén. Amenazaron diciendo, si no de, de ya haremos Burgos y lo iremos a buscar. Alvar le prometió cu cumplir su encargo. Cuando el Cid se enteró de las buenas nuevas del rey, mandó que su bien amigo, el moro, a Ben Galbón, escoltará al sequito de Jimena a Valencia. El Cid pidió 100 hombres y a Ben Galbón mandó 200. Cuando llegó a Valencia el sequito, el Cid, por su gran alegría, corrió en su caballo babieca haciendo alarde de su destreza. Finalmente desmontó y abrazó a su familia con mucho cariño y todos Lororon de contento. El Cid llevó a su mujer a estas hasta lo alto del Alcazar y dio, esta ha de ser nuestra morada. Desde allí vieron 
toda la ciudad con el mar a los lejos. Miraron la huerta frondosa y la gran belleza del lugar. El invierno se ha ido y marzo ya quiere entrar. Yeah. Don asked me whether I understood everything. I understood a little bit, but not much. So, <clears throat> obviously, this one here needs to be worked at by me. Una vez cumplida la misión, once uh, the mission was accomplished, etc. <coughs> Now, also, there are some questions here. Okay, so it's a good book. It's called Reading Comprehension. It's called Reading Comprehension. That's what, what it's all about, El Cid. Beautiful. It's a, it's a really a nice, nice book, you know, literature. Getting started in Spanish. Wow. Wow. The menu, the menu. Let's have a look. Churros. Churros are the fritters. Tostados, toast. Mantequilla y confitura, butter and jam. Mantequilla y confitura. Confitura, obviously, is the jam. Bocadillo, sandwich. Bocadillo. Ensalada, salad. Jamon. Ham, jamon. Jamon or hamon? I'm not sure. Queso, cheese. Paella, a rice dish. A paella is actually a rice dish. Chori chorizo, spicy sausage. Tortilla, omelette. Omelette is a tortilla. Ah. <coughs> Patatas fritas, chips. Helado, ice cream. Pasteles, cakes. Pinchitos, kebabs, hamburguesa, hamburger, café solo, black coffee, café con leche, white coffee, té con leche, té with milk, chocolate, chocolate caliente, hot chocolate, zumo de na naran naranja, orange juice, zumo de na naranja. That's good. Wow. Got a menu here as well. Embutidos, pork meats, mariscos, shellfish, acetunas, olives, acetunas, gambas, prawns, mejillones, mussels, cigalas, crayfish, ostras, oysters, Gaspacho, chilled vegetable soup, sopa de hao, garlic soup, garlic soup, I've never heard of it, garlic soup, wow, we put garlic, but not garlic soup, pure. <coughs> Roast suckling pig, cochinillo, cochinillo asado, cocido, meat and bean casserole. Lenguedo, soul. Trucha, 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 trout, zarzuela, spicy fish stew. Fruta, fruit, tarta de manzana, apple tart, queso, cheese. Wow, it's good, isn't it? We're coming to the end of Spanish. You know what? We can't finish off without Historia de un amor. Because now, I'm almost getting there, having learned this properly, really. Well, I should really learn the words now. Ya no estás más a mi lado, corazón, y en el alma solo tengo soledad. Y si ya no puedo verte, porque Dios me hizo quererte para hacerme sufrir más. Siempre fuiste la razón de mi existir. Adorarte para mí fue religión. En tus besos aún cantaba el calor que me brindabas, el amor y la pasión. 
Es la historia de un amor como no hay otro igual que me hizo comprender todo el bien, todo el mal que le dio luz a mi vida apagándola después. Ay, qué vida tan obscura si tu amor no viviré. Ya no estás más a mi lado, corazón, y en el alma solo tengo soledad, y si ya no puede verte, porque Dios me hizo quererte para hacerme sufrir más. Es la historia de un amor, como no hay otro igual, que me hizo comprender todo el bien, todo el mal, que le dio luz a mi vida, apagándola después. Ay, qué vida tan obscura, si tu amor no viviré. Ya no estás más a mi lado, corazón, y en el alma solo tengo soledad, y eso ya no puede verte, porque Dios me hizo quererte, para hacerme sufrir más, sufrir más, sufrir más. What a way to finish. This is Tom Padula from Tom Padula TV on YouTube and Insegna Booksellers. I'm going to finish off and this will then be available on my Facebook page. And thank you to those people who come on today. Okay, I look forward to these meetings for the next few weeks at least. Okay.